Gilligan's Island. Let's set sail, right, for a three-hour tour. The weather started getting rough. Pawnee's ship was tossed. But it's not the courage of the fearless crew. It's the courage of Paul in this story. It's Paul who says, don't worry. Don't fear. See, an angel had visited Paul. If you read in Acts 26, an angel of the Lord appears to Paul and said, don't worry about it. Pray. You'll be fine. You'll be fine. Don't worry about it. You know, adversity comes in our lives in many shapes and sizes, doesn't it? I don't have to tell people in this congregation about adversity. It comes at the most inconvenient time. It comes at the most disturbing times in your life. It just seems to pile on. It doesn't seem just to be one thing. It's two things or three things. And it's never serene. It's never quiet. It's very rare that when the storms in life come, it's just a bit of a windstorm and don't worry. Maybe it knocks down a tree limb or something. It's not like that at all. This morning we sang a couple of songs that I sang in Newfoundland. And I spent, well, we spent two years in Newfoundland. And let me tell you, if you haven't seen 120 kilometer hour winds whipping around a building, that's something to behold. Newfoundland has rugged weather. The understanding of shipwrecks, if, we go, if you go to Signal Hill and look at to the channel opening, you can see where the ships were wrecked. Or if you go to the other parts of the island, you can see how dangerous it is to be at sea and how a storm can just come up and blow in and destroy everything. We catch ourselves in the middle of these storms. We catch ourselves in the middle of these storms and we cry out. Sometimes we wake up in the middle of the night in a storm. Sometimes when we get to work, it's a storm. When we get home, it's the children, there's a storm. Diagnosis of an illness, storm. It's kind of like old McDonald, here a storm, there a storm, everywhere a storm, storm. See, God never promised us that we wouldn't have storms. He never promised us there wouldn't be storms in our life. The Apostle Paul, firsthand, during his shipwreck, sees this storm. No money to pay the bills, storm. No medical coverage, storm. It's the fight that some of us have every day, storm. It's interesting, in this storm, they put down four anchors. If you read in the story, the sailors put down four anchors to secure the ship. Will your anchor hold in the storms of life? I've anchored my soul in the haven of rest. Have you anchored your soul in the haven of rest? What do you do when you come into a storm? Paul's on his way to Rome to stand trial before Augustus Caesar. I mean, this isn't like today where they get in a storm and there's all of these abilities to to fight these storms. The storms in the Adriatic Sea just come out of nowhere. 276 people, that's a prisoner vessel. And what they would have done usually is the crew would have abandoned ship and the slaves would have gone down with the ship. The prisoners would have died. They'd have done everything they could to save themselves. This route that they took is usually closed during the storm season. So for them to be setting sail at this time was again to show people the power that God has. See, in every storm, God will be glorified. I believe it. 
Do you believe that? In every storm, God is glorified. You can't see it when you're going in the storm, trust me. You can't see it when you're there. But when you look back on your life and the storms of life have hit, where are you? Where are you in those storms of life? And where is God? Where do you see Him? He's there. The difference is, when you cast your anchors, do you cast them up or do you cast them down? If your anchor is God, you need to cast that anchor up. Remember when we were kids, I remember as kids I have a brother and a sister. I am the middle child, the forgotten middle child. Oh, sorry. Um, there's a point. I remember as a child, no, sitting at the dinner table, and my mother and father would always, always have rules. Always. There was a rule for everything. But we never listened. I mean, honestly. I was talking to my sister the other day, and we were just laughing about something that there was a rule, and I said, do you remember that? Yeah, I can't believe we, we never listened anyway. But parents have rules for a reason. Control. No, no, that's, that's what my son says. <laughs> That was the one who had the revenge. That was my son. They have rules for a reason. We have rules because our parents want what's best for us. That's why they make rules. That's why hopefully you follow the rules that your parents set out. They want what's best for us. God is no different. He has rules so that we will do the best that He wants of us. And he did this through the life of his Apostle Paul. Although he's shipwrecked, is he down? No. He praises God in the middle of a storm and breaks a piece of bread and says, we should eat. Most people are wondering if they're going to make it through the storm, but not Paul. He's got this courage, this strength. He's obedient to what God has called him to do. This is a trial he is going to. This is not going to be good for Paul, but yet he doesn't waver in his commitment or his love for God. He loves God and honors Him by listening to what He has to say. Is He in a storm? Sure He is. Is He going to be shipwrecked? Absolutely. You know, sometimes when we lose sight of God's Word, we feel shipwrecked in our own lives. Things just run aground, and we miss what God has for us, what God has in store for us. It's an interesting picture that is painted of this centurion, who by all rights should have not cared one bit about Paul, but it's because of Paul that there are other people are saved. His obedience to God helps other people off the sinking ship. You know, every day we're going to pass people that are on a sinking ship. Every day people that don't know God are on a sinking ship. It's going to be your influence, it's going to be what you say, it's going to be your input into their lives that can change the destiny of these people. You know that marvelous poster of William Booth's darkest England in the way out where there's people dying in the water and there's people on land reaching for them, but right in the middle of those people that are drowning in the water is Jesus. He's right there. He's right there with those people. And it's up to us to pull them, pull them out of that water and to help them. Our anchor has to be Jesus. Our anchor has to be Jesus Christ. See, if you don't help them, they're just going to sink deeper and deeper and deeper into their situation. 
But our anchor is Jesus, who can do anything. He can do immeasurably more than we could ever ask or imagine. See, Paul has an assurance policy, not an insurance policy, an assurance policy that God will save him. The angel told him, we know it's going to happen. It's not an insurance policy that, well, hopefully you never need this, but when you die, your loved ones are going to get money. No, it's an assurance policy. God assures you of His grace. He assures you of His mercy and His love. He assures you that He will never leave you or forsake you. That's the God that we serve. He wants us to trust Him in the middle of that storm. You remember that beautiful picture of Peter walking on water. Jesus says to Peter, come out. And Peter's fine as long as he stays on Jesus. As long as his gaze stays on Jesus, he walks on water. But as soon as he sees the storm, he begins to sink. As soon as he sees the storm, he begins to sink. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. You've got to keep your eyes on Jesus. Don't tell your problem, don't tell, sorry, don't tell Jesus how big your problem is. Tell your problem how big Jesus is. That's the reality. We all have problems. Not promise we won't. Take up your cross and follow me assures me that we are going to have problems. You and I will have problems, but trust in God in the midst of the adversity. The other thing is that you need to remain faithful and fearless in the midst of adversity. No matter what those around you say. You remember Job? Job and his friends who came to, to, to visit and What have you done that God is punishing you? With friends like that, who needs enemies? And his wife says, curse God and die. But Job stays faithful in the storm. He had a storm and a half. But he remained faithful. And he remained fearless. The other thing that Paul knew, who was at the other end of the anchor, he knew. He knew his God. He knew his Christ, his Jesus personally. And he knew that Jesus would bring him through it. And that's what you need to know today. Whatever the storm in life that you face, whatever it is, that Jesus will bring you through it. It's our job as Christians, as Christ followers, to reach out to those that are drowning in the sea of sin. And to help them reach the shore. I said to Paul, I, I could have had a whole Newfie sing song today. Launch out into the deep. Let the shoreline go. Are you prepared to launch out? Leave the safety of the land and go into the sea and rescue the perishing. They're all around us. Every day when you turn on the TV or you read the newspaper and you see what a sin-sick society we live in. They're everywhere. Everywhere. But you can't do it sitting in these nice, comfortable pews. You have to go out. This is where you get fed and that's where you go to feed others. You gotta get out. You gotta launch out into the deep. If you've really anchored your soul, if you really know who's in control, you have to do it. We are called, we are commanded, saved to save, saved to serve. As salvationists, we understand what it means to go and do. When the storms of life come your way, are you ready? <laughs>